Guys, we're in a time where people that say stupid things are in the forefront. They are the ones that are given the microphone. They will tell us stupid things that if we trust them enough, we will start believing they are rubbish as truth. Before we proceed, welcome to Citizen Concerned, where we remind you to beware of the comrades. I'm Katlero and would appreciate it if you subscribed to our YouTube channel, liked and shared this video with other citizens. <laughs> Firstly, who in their right mind would say that the construction mafia is anything decent? Unless, of course, if they are part of the construction mafia themselves. Who would say that the so-called business forums are good for us as the people of this country? The only businesses that are good for us are businesses that conduct business. <laughs> if you have a business, your job is to do what? Business. That is common sense. Charity is something you can do when you want and when you can. Charity is up to you to do or not to do. Businesses engage in corporate social responsibility when they are big enough. Some big ones are not as charitable and socially responsible as they could be, but that's a topic for another day. Please listen to these people as they tell us the obvious. It's the obvious and we all know this to be a fact. I know it to be a fact. Listen to this. I'm a business forum. I ask Business forums are badly affecting our projects, especially because they demand money they do not work for. We don't mind if they want us to offer them opportunities for them to work in our projects. We can do that, but they must work, not demanding hard cash of 30%. That is common sense, right? You have a construction project. That construction project is happening in a community where there are unemployed people. We agree. But for some reason, someone just shows up and demands 30% of the contract. They are not requesting that you employ some local people and teach them work to empower them. No, they simply want a cut for themselves or contributing nothing. And this is all because of the ANC. The ANC has created these monsters. Instead of establishing institutions that train citizens and empower them with skills that can make them necessary and valuable when opportunities arise, they have established a mindset of, if you are going to do work here, you're going to give me a portion of your money, even though I am not contributing anything to your work. I know that this has become the norm, but honestly, does that make any sense to us? I mean, even if you say you as a business owner want to give 30% of the contract to the locals, often you'll realize that there are no skills to be found in these places. How do you give someone a contract worth 30% when they don't know any plumbing? They don't know how to do bricklaying and they have no skills. In what world is it justifiable to demand money when you're not willing or able to do the work? We need to evaluate the senseless behaviors that we have adopted as the status quo. Yes, they call themselves business forums, but what does that even mean, a business forum? These are simply gangsters, plain and simple. Gangsters who are looking out for their pockets and the pockets of those closest to them. Think about it. If you refuse to do as the business forum says, they hinder the construction projects from happening. Now, who loses if the construction projects do not continue? Think about it clearly. It is not just the business owners who got the contract, but the residents of that community. Often, the business owners will simply move their money to Santon or they'll move to Botswana or Zambia. That is not a lie. People that are bullied by gangsters will soon and very soon grab their belongings, sell off their properties and leave with their investments, which negatively affects members of the community who, had it not been for the threats from the business forum, the construction mafia, would have benefited from the construction of roads, schools and other infrastructure. <laughs>
businesses have been affected and the most unfortunate thing is that most people are so scared to come up front. The system has created a, a cloud of fear even though they are victims but they are not ready to come out. I don't know what type of freedom do we have that when we say we are free but people don't want to practice that kind of freedom to free themselves. Lo usoma shishini unabasebenzi abanga pezulu kumashumi amashanu. Utele ukunga vezo ange nga yesi kane kosa kuchanje so kuhohiswa. Ano yiki yo mpe mkesa. Nkiyo yiki ya yipasa yungo yiki because wa wanda ni ba you know ba matrimba ba nina kota mshanti kutema kuhise ni you know akonde yezi ba matia wande. There is no law, there is no order. Ama polisa are corrupt. This woman and many other business owners are fed up with the so-called business forums. These construction mafias, some go to other areas within the country while others leave the country entirely. Most of us can't go anywhere. Most of us are too poor to move away. So we will be stuck with these people, these business forum members. Again, I ask you, who suffers? It is always the very poor people. Rich people stay rich whether you allow them to build or not. Ngenga yezi zikaneko zongevu abazenzela unotanda gule dolopu. Abanye osoma shishini baya futuka. Isi teti sika so dolopu kumaspala iking sabata talingebo uolwe tumapovu la uti lomaspala uzama kangangoko unako ukukweba abakiali zimbali ukubaba buyele mtata. Umtana is a gateway to hinder where it means whether we are at Deben, we are at Island, we are at Port St. John's, so on here is now the world coast. So I'm going to spend about a pin of food, but I'm going to take my spell. 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 For poor people, black or white, to come out of poverty, they need to start their own businesses. Plumbing, electrical installations, construction, whatever. They need to know how to market themselves and how to charge well. Instead of allowing and sometimes encouraging people to just demand handouts, the government of South Africa was supposed to make sure that the people of South Africa are full of skills that allow them to start their own enterprises. To come out of poverty, you either start your own company or you work for someone that has started a company of their own. Have you seen that in our construction companies and projects, we always find Zimbabweans, Mozambicans or Malawians? When it comes to motorcycle deliveries, you'll find the same group of people as well as Congolese and other non-South Africans. Many people from these countries have scaled up more than South Africans. Many of us in South Africa have been conditioned to focus on degrees and not skills. What is the result? Many of our people are sitting home unemployed with diplomas, degrees and masters while people from other countries come here with no papers but lots of skills and experiences, work for business owners or create their own businesses and make a living while South Africans wait for 370 grants. Look at what these university graduates have done. Weibo is part of a growing number of young people in China who are leaving their office jobs for blue-collar occupations. This civil engineer in China is choosing to work as a cleaner. When 23-year-old Zhang Weibo graduated from the Nanjing University of Science and Technology, he got a job managing construction projects. But after a few months on the job, several factors pushed him to make the switch from a white-collar job to blue-collar work. Weibo is part of an all-male cleaning team of eight who are all in their 20s, and seven of them are university graduates. 
The company's founder, 20-year-old Wang Kun, graduated from Yangzhou University with a degree in computer science. Over 400 million people in China have blue-collar jobs, and with high youth unemployment in a tough job market, some of the newest blue-collar workers are young graduates from China's universities. For Wei Bo, the switch to blue-collar work is paying off. He now earns up to 8,000 renminbi per month. It's 1.6 times more than his previous white-collar salary of 5,000 renminbi. We need to evaluate if the system we have adopted is working for us or not and make the necessary changes in our lives and the lives of our children and relatives. We need to change the mindset that degrees are the be-all and end-all of success in life. We need to stop looking down on blue-collar jobs that are making people money while we look down on them when we have no food in the fridge. I hope what the young Chinese graduates are doing encourages the millions of unemployed South African graduates to change their mindsets, be willing to get their hands dirty, and be willing to start something of their own. Challenges and all. Back to skilled non-South Africans coming to South Africa and making a living through blue-collar jobs. The lack of border control in our nation leads to illegal immigration, which contributes to business owners paying low salaries to the illegal labor and therefore allows them to undercut our local workers. On top of that, other businesses will even prefer the foreigners because of the absence of headaches when dealing with people who have more respect for their work and their employers and are not unionized. It can't be easy to employ someone with the mindset of the EFF, right? Anyway, like I said, the person who suffers the most from the actions of the construction mafia is a poor person. The person who suffers is the one who's living from meal to meal. When there are construction projects happening nearby, what does that mean? It means the construction workers are going to spend money locally. They'll spend money on food if the locals choose to bring a trailer to the gate and start cooking something to sell to the workers. That is the beginning of a business or a restaurant franchise right there. If they are building offices or malls, you know that will be repeat businesses. These are also jobs for the locals, that is, if there are any qualified people. Because if the locals are unqualified, people from other regions will come and occupy those roles. Which takes us back to the importance of empowering citizens with skills and experience that can prepare them for opportunities that will arise. There are also low-skilled jobs that can go to locals. So tell me, who loses when the business owners choose to take their money elsewhere due to the threats from the construction mafias? Think about it carefully. Most of the people complaining in these videos are black. How is a black community supposed to prosper? How is it supposed to come out of poverty when the very businesses that create the jobs you are begging for are being robbed and pushed out of the communities by these thugs? And instead of using our brains, we have celebrity business people making statements like these. Sean Mkise has a different take on the matter. As much as they are construction mafias, it's very important to collaborate. I've been in the industry for two decades with the construction mafia involved. But what I do when I come, I sit down because it's, 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 it's a crime for help to them. You just need to sit down, understand to them what is it that they need and you collaborate. I've collaborated with them. I've built quite a lot of people that are coming from these uh, um, <coughs> You call them construction mafias, I call them business forums, because all what they need is crying for help. 
Number one, there's so much of red tape in the construction industry. You need to have experience. Where are these people going to get experience if they're not being given an opportunity for them to work? So we as people that get the work, we need to collaborate with them, bring them on board. And they've never given me problems because I've brought them on board. I've built so much of people that were coming from those uh, construction mafias build them from grade one some of them are in grade six because i've collaborated with them i've bring them on board it's just to listen we mustn't look at them as enemies we must listen to them and hear them out and we meet each other halfway that's how i've done it imagine this woman wants to collaborate with extortionists this woman wants to collaborate with criminals <laughs> look at her acting like she's saying something mature and wise these are people who bully and kill people for money that is not theirs and you're trying to tell us that we need to collaborate with them. Collaborate with people called the construction mafias. <laughs> she goes on to say that it's a cry for help. Imagine, people are being murdered by these gangsters and someone says it's a cry for help. Give us money or else you won't work. That sounds like a cry for help to you. These are not teenagers you can say are crying for help when they go and get drunk or get into drugs. Bomam Kize are the business people that we have been given by these ANC guys. Good afternoon, Michelle. Certainly, it's not only businesses that have been affected by extortionists. Seven business, big businesses that have closed down already. The medical center is the last one to close down and there are also you know, speculations that another big business will be closing after they were allegedly, you know, approached by um, extortionists uh, that they must pay 350,000 rands every month as um, to, to, to be protected, in order to be protected. And the schools, this thing is, for, is, 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 is spilling off to the schools. We are currently at La Pumikwezi Primary School here outside Umtata in a peri urban of Mahamin and King uh, 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 of Abatembu, King Zwelibanzi, Daringebo, was here together with the top officials from the district of basic education here in Umtata and he addressed masses of people, of parents, concerned parents who were even afraid to speak to us about these allegations that there was a group of people that stormed the school sometime last week demanding that the money that is supposed to pay for, uh, the, the, for the tower, you know, that is providing network here at school must be deposited into their bank account. We did speak with those people that were you know, alleged to have stormed the school and they denying ever storming the school. But what they are saying is they want to be part of, they, they, they asking rather questions about the tower. How was it erected? Uh, how can they benefit? Because they have cultural, you know, um, you know, uh, inc okay, incidents, you know, uh, that's how they put it, that they, they want to empower their children in terms of getting involved, involved in cultural activities. But they have no sense of hard work, just entitlement and no regard for ripple effects. To them, the money comes easy since it's just taxpayers' money, right? They're getting tenders easily from the government, so they simply make sure to deliver substandard products. Look at the work she does. A lot of her work has been substandard and clearly it doesn't bother her to pay these mafias because she's looting the money anyway. Bentleys and Rolls Royces and of course, a football team for her beloved son. <laughs> Mum Kize is simply another person who has nothing to offer South Africa in the future, guys. She's simply a leech that sucks dry the resources of this country. And she's not alone. There are many just like her. The truth is, every industry has a barrier to entry, some more difficult to cross than others, but all can be crossed. If you want experience, then start off by building your own wall outside. It may seem silly to some I know, but is that not experience? Why do we always want our start to be glamorous? 
Everything big starts small and construction is an industry in which you simply showcase the work you have done, market yourself and position yourself for opportunities. People simply want to rise and end up at the top of the food chain without going through the process, putting in the hours. In this day and age, almost everything requires experience. So get that experience, even in the smallest ways. People who want good quality for the right amount of money will simply look for the person who is the most competent. Will that be you? Will you be that person? With your few years of experience, why should anyone give you a contract to run when you have no clue how to run the project? Perfect your craft before you start demanding work opportunities of high value. You know, so a bunch, a group of really brilliant psychologists in the, in the field of expertise research have sat down and tried to figure out how long do you have to work at something before you become really good, right? And the answer seems to be, it's an extraordinarily consistent answer in an incredible number of fields, and that is you need to have practiced to have apprenticed for 10,000 hours before you get good. So every great classical composer, without exception, composes for at least 10 years before they write their masterwork. Mozart, 10. Mozart is, is composing at 11, but he's composing garbage at 11. I mean, he doesn't produce something great until he's 22 or 23. Mm -hmm. Concerto number nine, I think, 271. Um, if I asked you how long did it take you when you were doing this job before you felt comfortable and good at what you were yeah, doing? Ten years at least. Ten years, yeah. Yeah. Uh, same with me. When I, I mean, it's an incredibly consistent finding and it, it's really important because it says that we are far too impatient with people. When we, when, we, when we assess whether someone has got what it takes to do a certain job, we always want to make that assessment after six months or a year or... And that's ridiculous, you know? The kinds of jobs we have people do today are sufficiently complex that they require a long time to reach mastery. And what we should be doing is setting up institutions and structures that allow people to spend the time and effort to reach mastery, not judging them prematurely. How many people have you seen working on their craft while not getting paid anything? It is something that needs to become a culture of ours, that we develop and share with others. Be willing to suffer and toil building your craft and your business before you win anything, before you make any profit. Don't call them enemies, she says. She wants us to listen to them. Anyway, he is the Minister of Public Works talking about these construction mafias who are crying out for help and how we deal with them. You know, what we can't allow is uh, we can't go and hide in a corner um, just because they are making uh, these threats. Um, we need to ensure that law enforcement meets these people head on. Uh, and that's why I've said there's no negotiating because... The only negotiating that we should be doing is the length of prison sentences that they should be serving for uh, perpetuating crimes against the state, because that's actually what it is. Uh, this is state money. These are state-led projects, uh, and we are being held hostage by a, a bunch of thugs and thieves. No negotiations. I mean, have you seen the works of these people? Children are missing out on their education because of these people. Schools are affected. Extortion has reached crisis proportions in Umtata in the Eastern Cape. Criminal syndicates in Umtata are demanding protection money from businesses, schools and healthcare facilities. And this has resulted in businesses shutting down and doctors and school principals going into hiding after being threatened for not paying. There is no peace for anyone, guys. These people simply want those cuts regardless of how it affects even our youngest people in schools. But hey, they're just crying out for help. What I find very strange is that these people have been going unpunished for years. Some of these people even get paid into their personal bank accounts, which means that it would be easy to get evidence of their extortion. This business owner got tired of intimidation and for paying for nothing. He closed shop and moved overseas. The police have been given all the evidence and yet until now, there have been no consequences for these people. People who are willing to murder are roaming our streets freely like they did nothing wrong. The Beer House has shut its doors due to alleged extortion. Uh, the restaurant, which is situated on Long Street, has been in operation for 11 years. The business made the announcement on social media app X on the 1st of August 
saying that the past weekend would be the last. The establishment says it's been dealing with extortionists since 2015 when one of its staff members was murdered. This issue makes me furious. Just what kind of people do we have running our country? Some of the people that rise to become leaders in business are the types of people who clearly have no idea how to run successful businesses because their practices are far from best practices. They have simply risen on the back of corruption or thievery, so they have no idea what the dangers of construction mafias are. Construction mafias and any other extortion ring causes the prices of goods to go up. That is a real fact. If they must pay 30% to people that are not good at the job, it means the job will require someone who is good at the job to fix it. If you pay the so-called protection fees demanded by these people, you will then have to start overcharging for your services. For example, the beer house guy would have had to raise the cost of the beer, the cost of a drink. The same applies to shops and spazas. Whatever your business is, if the mafia demands the so-called management fees or protection fees, bears believe that it is affecting the poor people on the ground. Instead of the business focusing on corporate social responsibility or donating to specific communities or charities, best believe they will raise the cost of goods and services on you, the end user or the taxpayer, and then still they might have to stop giving to charities. The reality is that since the murder, uh, with a short interruption um, from 2017 to 2020, we always paid the racketeers. Uh, after the murder, we had no choice. And ever since, we operated just like any other nightlife business, which means if you operate in the nightlife as a bar or as a club in Cape Town, you have to pay up. Consumers need to be aware that they are paying for the legal defense of Mark Liefman and Nafis Modak when they go out to party in Cape Town. There is nothing decent about construction mafias, even if rich celebrities want to convince us otherwise. Their extortion affects the poorest among us, the ones who are really crying out for our help. The longer this construction mafia nonsense continues, the longer our communities suffer by losing out on opportunities to get infrastructure, to get jobs, or to get clients supporting their businesses. Hopefully, with all the recent spotlight on construction mafias, the GNU will deal with it once and for all. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. As always, if you enjoyed this video, please like it and share it with others. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, why haven't you? Anyway, I'm Katlero. This is Citizen Concerned. And until next time, beware of the comrades.